Today we're going to be talking about how to use Riemann sums to approximate volume. And in this particular problem, we've been given the double integral of x e to the negative x y. We've been asked to approximate the volume that lies below this function and above the rectangle defined by this interval here, x interval 0 to 2 by the y interval 0 to 1. So remember when you've been given a region like this, r equals, and then these intervals, you're going to have an x interval by a y interval. It's always going to be x first and then y second. We've also been told that m equals n equals 2. That just means that we're going to be dividing our rectangle here, this region 0 to 2 by 0 to 1 into two rectangles across by two rectangles tall. Again, sometimes m and n are not equal to each other, in which case you have to remember that m is the number of rectangles you're dividing your x interval into, and n is the number of rectangles you're dividing your y interval into. We've also been told that we're supposed to use upper right-hand corners. So the first thing that we should do is draw a picture of the volume that we're going to be approximating, and we really don't need to draw a picture of the volume. That would be probably over complicated for this problem, we really just need to draw the rectangle that the volume is sitting on top of. So we can draw that in a two-dimensional xy coordinate plane. So we have an xy coordinate system here with x and y, and we've been told that the interval for x extends from 0 to 2. So we'll call this right here 0, and we'll call this 2 here, and our interval for x is going to go all the way from 0 to 2. We know that our interval from, for y is going to go from 0 to 1. So let's go ahead and call this here maybe 1. And this is going to be the rectangle on top of which our volume will sit. Now we've been told that m equals n equals 2. And what that means is that we're going to take this rectangle we just drew and divide it into two rectangles across by two rectangles tall. And you always want to divide the rectangle evenly. So notice now that we have four equal rectangles because we divided the rectangle exactly in half lengthwise and exactly in half widthwise. So we divided our rectangle, and now we've been told to use upper right-hand corners. So using upper right-hand corners means we're going to look at each of our four rectangles and plot the upper right-hand corner of it. So this is the upper right-hand corner of this first rectangle here. The rectangle on top of it, the upper right-hand corner, is right here. And then for the two rectangles over here on the right, we have upper right-hand corners here. And we should go ahead and identify these coordinate points. So this first coordinate point here is going to be at 1 comma 1 half, which we can see because we have these coordinate points here for 2 and 1. This coordinate point will be 1 comma 1. Then we have 2 and 1 half and 2 and 1. So those are our coordinate points. Now to get an estimation of volume using Riemann sums, all we're going to do is use this formula here, and really all we're looking at is the right-hand side. What this formula tells us is that exact volume, the double integral of the region, exact volume can be approximated by this Riemann sum here if we take the limit of m and n as they go to infinity. And what that means is that if we just use an infinite number of rectangles, if the area of each rectangle gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and instead of just using four rectangles here, we use an infinite number, then that'll give us an exact approximation or the exact estimation here of the volume. In this case, though, m and n are equal to 2. So if we use summation notation here, what we're going to say m is equal to 2, so we have two rectangles in the x interval here, and we'll say i equals 1. And then for n, we have two rectangles in the y interval, so we'll have 2 here with j equal to 1. And then we have f of x sub ij comma y sub ij. And really all this means right here is that we're going to plug each of our coordinate points that we found over here in our picture into our function. That's all that means. When you use upper right hand corners, you can simplify this and call it f of x sub i comma y sub j. If you use anything else, upper left hand corners, lower left hand corners, lower right hand corners, or midpoints, you can't use x sub i and y sub j. You have to use this notation here. It's just really a, a technicality in terms of notation, but you can simplify the notation nevertheless, like this when you use upper right hand corners. Still though, 
no matter what notation we use, we're just plugging in the coordinate points that we found. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to multiply by delta A. Now delta A is the change in area for each rectangle. Really it just means finding the area of each rectangle or multiplying the change in X by the change in Y. So if we look at our lower left hand corner rectangle here, our first rectangle, we can see that the width of it is one, right? We start for X, we start at zero, we go to one here. The width of it is one. The height of it starts at zero and goes up to one half. So our rectangle here is one by one half, and that's the same for all of our rectangles. So delta A, delta A is equal to one times one half, which is one half. So delta A will be one half and we'll multiply each of our coordinate points plugged into our original function by delta A. So really what this simplifies to is volume is going to be equal to delta A, which we already found was one half, times whatever we get when we plug in each coordinate point to our original function. So let's start by plugging in one one half, this first coordinate point here, to our original function. What we'll get there is we'll plug in x right here and we'll get one times e to the negative one times one half. That's just going to give us negative one half. Then we'll add to that whatever we get when we plug in our second coordinate point. So again, we'll have 1 times e to the negative 1 times 1 is just negative 1, plus whatever we get when we plug in our third coordinate point, which will be 2 1 half here. So we'll get 2 e to the negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1. And then what we get when we plug in our fourth coordinate point, 2 1, we get plus 2 e to the negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2. And that's it. This is all we have to do to approximate volume. Now it's just a matter of simplifying what we got here. So we'll get volume is equal to 1 half times, here if we move these exponents to the denominator, we can flip the sign on the exponent from negative to positive. So instead of e to the negative 1 half, we'll get 1 over e to the positive 1 half. Then we get plus here. Notice we have 1 e to the negative 1 plus 2 e to the negative 1. These combine and we get 3 e to the negative 1. So we get plus 3 over e to the positive 1 when we move that to the denominator. Then here we'll get plus 2 over e squared because this negative 2 becomes a positive when we move it to the denominator. And if we continue here, we can find a lowest common denominator of e squared and combine the fractions. And what we would get is e times 3 plus root e plus 2 all over 2e squared. And I'll let you guys get there on your own. It's not necessarily critical because since we've been asked to find an approximation of volume, you really want to give a decimal approximation if you can. So whether you get to this simplified step or leave it here, you can go ahead and plug this all into your calculator and what you'll get is an approximation for volume of 0 0.990 which again is an approximation of the volume that's sitting on top of this rectangle, this large rectangle we drew here, and below this function here, based on an approximation using four rectangles and their upper right hand corners. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.